let's pack today's lunchbox for my friends and followers today i'm making them the infamous salmon and rice bowl but with a little nana joe twist i'm going to begin by seasoning some salmon fillets with a little bit of cajun seasoning then i sear them up on my skillet add a sweet and spicy glaze all over the fillets then i smash the salmon and is it salmon or salmon because i say salmon i'm just gonna add my steam rice with my salmon and then mix everything together i'm not gonna add any sauces yet i am gonna add them when they're in the box so that the plate looks a lot cuter I made a mild burning boho hot sauce and I'm just gonna drizzle it all over my salmon. I also drizzle a little bit of sriracha, sprinkle some sesame seeds and a little bit of green onion for garnish. And I don't know how to make my avocado look cute, but I did add a lot of avocado. A little bit of kimchi on the side and a small salad, which is basically just cucumber and carrots. Oh, and a small chile para morder. That's for the brave ones. And don't think I forgot those nori sheets. Everyone's gonna get a small little packet of nori sheets. That way they get the full viral experience. For their drink today, they had the option between a soda or an agua de tamarindo as my kids counting his coins most of them chose both because they're not big fan of tamarindo and it's okay and that's it guys and i'm just gonna get everything ready for them so they can come and pick up during lunch time bye Let me show you guys how I made my agua de tamarindo. These are dried tamarindo pods or tamarind, I believe it's what it's called in English. Probably not. You can either sit here and be all miserable peeling them and getting your fingers super sticky, your manicure ruined, and it hurts. Or you can just rinse the dust off, put them in a pot, and then take them to boil for about 15 minutes. This is the lazy way, guys. This is the one agua fresca I hate making only because it reminds me of when I was a kid and my grandma used to make us peel these tamarindos by hand. And it freaking hurts. But anyways, once they cool off you're gonna put them in a container and then with the glove of course karen i'm gonna stick my hand in there and just start smashing away the point is to get the seeds from the pulp so you just go in there and you smash with your hands until everything is just smashed then you're gonna strain everything and while you're straining you're gonna go in there remove the vines or whatever the hell those are and continue to mess with the pulp in there just to make sure you get everything i like to pour water on all that mess that's right there on the strainer just to make sure i get everything Everything. Now I'm just gonna pour it into my three quart pitcher in with sweetener of choice. I'm gonna use a cup of sugar, wink wink, and I mix everything like my life depended on it just to make sure that all the sugar has dissolved. I'm gonna add some ice to my pitcher. Why? Because my freezer is making way too much ice. Then I fill up the rest of my pitcher with water and mix. Now this is the perfect time for you to check for sweetness. If it needs more sugar, add more sugar. If it's too sweet, just add more water. To garnish my cup, I'm just gonna dip it into some rim dip. I didn't put ice on my favorite cup only because i had ice in the pitcher so i'm just gonna pour myself some delicious and refreshing agua de tamarindo then i garnish it with a slice of lime i don't know why i just did and of course my matching straw and there you have it guys hope you like this recipe bye let me show you guys how i've been tricking my toddler into having breakfast in the morning every day he wakes up he's always asking for i for those who need translation that means ice cream but that kid's in the future if he thinks i'm gonna give him ice cream for breakfast so i get these cups from revive superfoods they're basically smoothie cups and they're already pre-measured for you they have different types of flavors all you gotta do is add your liquid i'm gonna add milk because we're tricking him into having some ice cream of course he's always participating in the kitchen by the way he got into the markers but we're gonna blend the smoothie and then pour it in a bowl and yes i know this is a lot for him but we were sharing then i add his favorite fruits he loves banana and strawberries why the bananas look like that no clue i'm also adding a little bit of granola and instead of peanut butter we're gonna use a seed butter for him he loves it more than peanut butter as a matter of fact he don't even like peanut butter and just for a little bit of crunch i'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of cranberry seeds since the granola already had chia instead of calling this a fruit bowl we should call it a fiber bowl because they shit all day but i don't care as long as he's eating if you guys have a picky eater like me you need to find ways to finesse the system i think i got breakfast figured out now i just need lunch and dinner well hope you like this recipe bye Let's pack today's lunchbox for my friends and followers and TikTok and their headquarters. Yes, TikTok, this lunch was for you guys. I'm gonna try to butter them up just to see if they give me my blue check mark. Cause I'm not getting enough press. Maybe I can get enough cool points for that check mark. So today I'm making them Big Papa Burritos Ahogados de Birria or Big Papa Birria Smothered Burritos, Drowned Burritos. I don't know, y'all get the point. So I'm gonna begin by making my birria and once the birria is ready, I'm gonna cut it up into small little pieces. Then I 
I warm up my big papa tortilla using some of the grease from my birria, add lots of cheese, then I add my meat. I'm also adding some Mexican rice, some onion and cilantro, and some fresh guacamole. Oh, and a salsa de molcajete. And FYI, this is not a Weight Watchers recipe, so it's gonna be greasy. Roll it up, make sure I don't bust in our face, then I split it in half for them, put it in their foam box, oh wait, paper box, and then ladle some of that delicious hot consomme all over that burrito. Add some more cheese, let that melt, some more onion and cilantro so their breath can be nice and stinky, and all the fixings. For their drink, I'm going to make them a strawberry kiwi agua fresca because I didn't have blueberries to manifest that blue check mark. And that's it guys, now I'm just gonna get everything ready for them, including their drink so they can come and pick up during lunchtime. Bye! Let's pack today's lunchbox for my friends and followers. Today I'm making them Big Papa Tortas de Carnita with the homemade freshly baked bolillo. So I'm gonna begin by making my carnitas. And don't worry guys, I got the recipe coming up. As soon as our carnitas are ready, I pull them out of the grease and then start to chop it up into small little pieces. Here's our freshly baked bolillo, crispy on the outside and fluffy in the inside. I'm gonna butter up my buns, make sure they're nice and crispy. I'm gonna mix a salsa and molcajete with a little bit of mayo so I can spread it all over my bottom bun. Then I add some mozzarella cheese, lots of carnitas sprinkle a little bit of cebolla and cilantro so their breath can be nice and stinky i also add a couple slices of queso fresco along with some cabbage and some tomato slices a couple of jalops so they can have a burning bajo later and on the top bun we're gonna smear a hefty amount of some fresh made guacamole top it off with my top bun and there you have it guys hefty 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 now we're just gonna wrap it up in some parchment paper and cut it in half for them because this torta was bigger than big papa there should be an we should come up with a new name guys it wasn't even fitting in the box Just just in case that torta wasn't enough, I'm also going to add a side of crispy seasoned fries. In a separate little cup, I'm going to add some extra salsa that I made in my molcajete. And for a small treat, I'm going to give them a side of arroz con leche. I should probably add a diaper because I'm almost sure these mother truckers are going to poo themselves today. I actually didn't have time to make an agua fresca today, so they are going to take a soda. And that's it, guys. Now I'm just going to get everything ready for them, including their drinks, so they can come and pick up during lunchtime. Bye! Let me show you guys how I made my carnitas. Here I have a big old chunk of pork shoulder or pork butt. Sorry, I'm immature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it up into big old chunks. I'm using a sharp ass knife that, by the way, is gonna be part of my giveaway that I'm gonna be announcing soon. And we're not gonna trim any fat, we're just gonna cut it up into chunks. Like I said, big chunks like this. You're also gonna need a manteca or lard. You need to use manteca or lard. You can't use anything else. Or they're not gonna be carnitas. First, you're gonna let your lard be screaming hot and then you're going to sear every single part of your meat. I'm doing this by section. We're just gonna get a little bit of color to the meat. Since it's all seared, I put it back into that lard, a whole garlic head, a whole onion, a couple of bay leaves, some whole peppercorns, and some cloves. I want to say a pinch of both. You're also going to need the juice and the peel of one orange. So just squeeze the juice in there and then stuff the peel. That's cooking in a cup with a little bit of water. You're going to add about a tablespoon of salt and then mix it all together, pour into your carnitas. Now this is going to cook for a while. I want to say for about two to three hours. But you're going to constantly go in there and then kind of move the meat around. That way it gets cooked Truly. Once my meat is super tender, I'm gonna go in there and add half a can of Dr. Pepper. I know some of you guys are gonna fall on your asses and be like, Dr. Pepper, you need to add a Coke. Well, I didn't have a Coke. And let me tell you, when you don't have an ingredient, the world's not gonna stop for you. You need to improvise. So the purpose of the Coke and the Dr. Pepper is to give your carnitas more color. As you can see right here, it turned into a caramel color. So I let it cook in the Coke for another 10 to 15 minutes. And once the meat is super tender, I'm gonna take it out, leave it in a bowl and let that rest before doing anything to it because it is screaming hot. And let me show you guys how tender the meat is. You don't even have to go in there, go ham with your knife and start chopping away. All you gotta do is press on the meat and it melts like butter. But that still didn't stop me from going ham with my knife. What can I say, man? I got a new knife. And that's it, guys. Now your carnitas are ready for your tortas and your tacos. So hope you like this recipe. Bye! Let me show you guys what breakfast looked like today at Nana Joe's. This is flor de calabaza or zucchini flowers, pumpkin flowers, squash flowers, whatever flowers. They all look the same. Sometimes people stuff these with cheese and fry them, but I'm not doing that today. We're doing zucchini flower quesadillas or quesadillas de flor de calabaza. First, we're going to clean up the flowers and remove all the pollen. And these little green things here too because they're bitter. And guess who's in the kitchen trying to help his mama. I feel like breakfast time has become a bonding time between me and my baby and I'm 
loving it. Once you washed off all the extra protein from your flowers, you know, those little bugs, you're going to cut them up. We're also going to dice up some onions and some jalapenos. I just made sure to remove the seeds and the veins because my baby was eating from this. I'm also going to dice up a couple of garlic cloves, saute everything in a little bit of oil, season it up with your seasoning of choice. You can add salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, whatever you want. Once your onions and peppers are cooked, then you're going to add the flour. I only saute the flour here for about two minutes just so that it doesn't get super soggy. For my tortillas, I'm going to use handmade corn tortillas. I'm using one cup of maseca and one cup of warm water. Oh my gosh, she's mixing it with her nails. That is so gross. Guys, this breakfast is for my husband. He eats other stuff. Mixing masa with my nails is the least of his worries. But anyways, once you mix your masa, you're going to have to like mix it there for like a good five minutes until it's nice and soft. Then using your tortilla press and between two sheets of plastic, you're going to press your tortilla. Then I put my tortillas on my hot as comal. And basically, once you see the tortilla change colors on the side, you're going to give it a flip. You only flip your tortilla twice. That's it. Then you add your cheese of choice, your flour filling, and that's it, guys. These were for my husband. Oh my God, cholesterol. It's our cholesterol. I also made two little tiny baby ones in hopes that my baby ate them. Did he eat them? No. And as for myself, I just made mine a low carb quesadilla. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with carbs. I'm just watching my carb intake. Yeah, there's me struggling opening that damn quesadilla. It was too damn hot. And that's it, guys. Hope you like this recipe. Bye.